Hi, I'm happy to present new updates and exciting announcements for serverless workflows in Google Cloud. My name is Filip Knapik and I'm a product manager working on workflow products. Workflows is a very broad term. Let's first look into some use cases and needs around them. Let's imagine an e-commerce application, a workflow that needs to orchestrate a couple of steps. For instance, first create an invoice, then generate a PDF, and then send it to a customer over email. You want a workflow product not only to manage and orchestrate execution of those steps, but also, for instance, recover from errors that those steps may encounter. Another use case that you may want to manage with a workflow product is processing of a batch of transactions or events or customer records. And then for each of those, you may want to look into the contents and make a decision on whether to take a path with additional steps. Like for instance, you're looking into business transactions, checking if they're overdue, and if so, sending a reminder to affected users or customers. But workflows don't have to be focused on business transactions only. They can also help in automation of IT landscape. Like for instance, you want to start a virtual machine, then wait for some time, check whether specific conditions are met. Like for instance, application is up and running. And if so, take an action. And if not, take another action. And obviously there is many other use cases in IT automation space and others. And workflow products are expected to be very flexible in automating work across different types of endpoints and APIs. Now, what do all those use cases have in common? There is a set of foundational needs that a product needs to support in order to enable implementation of a workflow in a production environment. The first and probably most important element is reliable execution of steps. Again, in the business scenario, in the production deployment, we can't afford to fail an execution of a workflow just because there was a temporary network outage and a single step was affected and a single step wasn't properly executed. And as such, a workflow product needs to be able to recover from some of those errors and handle exceptions or retry steps as needed to maximize the chance of successful execution. Another feature that a workflow product needs to have is efficient handover of the work. And it's not only handover of the work and orchestration of steps, what a workflow product also needs to provide for is, is transition and handover of the data between those steps, because individual steps can produce data that other steps may rely on in their execution. Decision execution is another aspect that is important for workflow products. Imagine that you're building a workflow that is processing your orders or orders from your customers, and you want to execute a different path if an order exceeds a specific threshold. Let's say beyond or above $1,000, you want to assign a sales engineer or sales specialist to that customer to assist them because the deal is so big. And in order for you to implement such decisions as part of your workflow directly, you want to have a feature that allows you to manage execution in a different way, provided that specific conditions are met. Workflows don't always integrate APIs or products of the same type. You may want to orchestrate work across different products using different API languages, using different HTTP methods, different authentication models, or even hosted in different places. And a workflow product needs to be able to integrate them all, regardless of their diversity and differences in implementation. Last but not least of the features that I would like to call out is a holistic perspective on execution and management of your workflows. First of all, imagine that a third step of a workflow fails. You need to be able to understand what was the business transaction that this step failed in to be able to recover from it. Or you may also need to see how many workflow executions you had for a specific customer or in specific domain. All those features are very important for a workflow product. And when looking into those, we have realized that our customers would greatly benefit from an introduction of a serverless workflow orchestration product as part of Google Cloud. And with that, I'm very happy to announce a new product in Google Cloud family workflows. What this product is expected to address is orchestration and integration of different types of APIs. First of all, integration of serverless compute products. Let's say you want to create a workflow consisting of different cloud functions and you want to effectively and efficiently 
hand the work over in between them. This is a great use case for workflows or the same for Cloud Run. But we don't want to stop here. You can also create a workflow that, for instance, reads the data from Firestore or pushes a message to PubSub or doing any other operation in other Google Cloud APIs. And this is also not where we wanted to stop because we understand that our customers are running in hybrid environments and often rely on, for instance, software as a service APIs hosted externally to our cloud. And therefore, Workflows products also support direct calls to external APIs as part of the workflow definition, including all of the handling of errors, retries, and everything around it. So this product is expected to help our customers in orchestration of work across practically speaking, any of the APIs within Google Cloud or external and integration of those APIs in a holistic way to enable implementation of workflows. The product is fully managed and fully automated. We want our customers to focus on the business logic of the workflow rather than focusing on the underlying infrastructure. Customers are not expected in case of workflows to look into the storage or think about patching of the underlying components. This is all taken care of. Another element that is fully taken care of is the scale. Regardless if you need to run one workflow execution per week, one per day, or 1,000 per second, we got it covered. The product automatically scales, and it also scales down to zero, which means that if you're not running your workflows for some time, you don't have any executions, your cost is also going down to zero. We assume that some of our customers may want to use workflows in latency-sensitive workloads. For instance, having a customer, having a user waiting on the other side of the screen for an outcome of a workflow execution. To support those cases, we have engineered the product in a way that step transitions are very quick so that we don't introduce unnecessary latency in the execution of a business workflow. We have also taken care of time it takes to start a new workflow execution, and there is no so-called cold start. So what it practically means is that starting a new workflow execution is not only quick, but also predictable and deterministic. The product comes with built-in security features. First of all, you cannot make unauthenticated requests. So there's no risk of somebody, for instance, a bad actor or somebody accidentally calling out your workflow and starting the execution when not expected. The product also comes with full integration with identity and access management of Google Cloud, which means that you can use it to orchestrate the work of other Google Cloud products with built-in authentication without worrying about tokens and other elements related to authentication to those. If you need to make requests to external APIs and you need to manage secrets or passwords accordingly, you can use Secret Manager for this integration and make secure calls to external APIs as well. And obviously the product comes with encryption at rest and in transit, provided that you're using HTTPS endpoints. By now, you are probably wondering, how do I model a workflow? Can you show me an example of how to do this? And here it comes. On the left-hand side, we're seeing an example of a workflow, which consists of first a call to a cloud function. Then based on the outcome of that cloud function, we're checking a condition whether the transaction number is greater than 100. And if so, we want to trigger an execution of a Cloud Run deployment. Otherwise, we do not. The right-hand side is showing the source code that implements this specific workflow in our product. So the first step is making a call to a Cloud function as part of HTTP GET request, and we're also passing some inputs to that specific function. We're also saying that we want to have the outcome of that step stored in metric result variable. This is a workflow variable we're going to use later on. In the second step of the workflow, we have a conditional a statement which checks whether a value, in this case, transaction number, which is an outcome of the first step, is greater than 100. And if so, we're making a call to a Cloud Run deployment using HTTPS POST method. And by the way, we're also passing the outcome of the first step to the second step as part of the call to this um, Cloud Run deployment. So this is a short example, but this is just to show you how you can model a workflow using our syntax using our language. We took a lot of effort to ensure that this language is as brief, as clear to read and write in as possible to give uh, the maximum benefit to our developers. Let's have a quick look at the demo of our product. Let's imagine that we want to build an e-commerce workflow that sends an invoice to a customer. The input to the workflow will be an ID of a user that we want to perform this operation for. The first step of the workflow will be reading a record for that specific user from our Firestore database. 
If the amount due equals to zero, we are finishing the execution at this point because there is nothing to do. Otherwise, we want to generate an invoice and send it over as an email. We're going to use a cloud function to generate an invoice as a PDF. And then we want to make a request to an external service to send an email. Since this is an external service, we first need to retrieve a secret to be able to authenticate to that service. Let's see how this could be implemented in our product. A source code of a workflow is a YAML structure. In the first step of the workflow, we're making a request to Firestore API, passing an argument being an ID of a user, and reading it from the database. This obviously needs to be an authenticated request, as otherwise Firestore wouldn't let us read anything, and this is what these two lines of the workflow code do. Whatever the output is of that step is stored in a user record variable. In the next step of the workflow, we're going to check whether a specific field in the response, amount due, equals to zero. Now, the response of the first step was a JSON string, and Workflow Engine is smart enough to convert that into a dictionary that we can use to validate whether the amount matches our expectations. If this condition is met, the workflow execution finishes with no amount due message. Otherwise, it proceeds to the next step being a function call using a POST request to our PDF generator function. Again, this is an authenticated request because we don't want our function to be executed by anyone. And as a request body, we're also passing the contents that we want to have in our PDF so that our function knows what to generate. The output of that request is stored in a PDF output variable, which will actually be the contents of the PDF file that we want to use as an attachment. In the next step, we're making a request to Secret Manager API to read a specific secret, in my case called email key. And then we're going to use that secret in the request to our email sending service. And this is what the last step of the workflow does. And as you can see, we're also including here an attachment being the PDF output body, which is the response of the function generating our PDF. And as the very last step of the workflow, we are responding with a message sending that the user was sent an invoice for a specific amount. So with that, let's test it out and let's see if it actually works. Let me first show you the entry for a user we're going to be testing it for, which is smith.j. Apparently he has $784 amount that we need to send an invoice for. And by the way, if you're interested, the function that we're using to generate the PDF is based on an open source package available as a PyPy module. So let's now execute this workflow and see if it works. So as an input, I'm passing an ID of our user, smith.j, and I'm requesting an execution of the workflow. As you can see, execution state is active, but let's refresh and see if it's done. Apparently it is. So the output of the workflow is the user was sent an invoice for $784, which is what we expect because this is what we saw in the database. Now, I also happen to have an email account for that user. And as you can see, we actually got an email that we were expecting with a PDF attachment. Let's have a look. And the value matches our expectation because this is exactly what we saw in the database. So with this short demo, you were able to see that we were able to orchestrate the work of different Google Cloud products, including Firestore, Cloud Function, or Google Secret Manager, as well as making a request to an external service to send our email. And orchestration of all of those tasks was performed flawlessly by workflows. Let's now have a look into the pricing model. First of all, we wanted to design a pricing model that follows the promise of serverless scalability, which means we want the cost of using the product to grow exactly as the usage grows. In other words, the moment you go down to zero because you have an idle period or you don't need to execute a workflow for whatever business reasons, we don't want to charge for this specific scenario. And therefore, the more you run your workflows, the higher, obviously, the cost will be following exactly your demand and following the growth of your business. We differentiate two types of steps in our pricing model. The pricing is based on number of executed steps in a workflow. Internal steps relate to all the elements you can call within the Google Cloud, like Cloud Functions or Cloud Run or internal 
variable assignments or expression evaluations within the Google uh, Cloud Workflow product itself. For all those operations, the cost is one cent per 1,000 steps executed. For external requests, which are all the HTTP requests going to the outside world, to non-Google domain names, the cost is two and a half cent per 1,000 steps. For both of those types of steps, there is a free tier. So if you just want to give it a try, you want to see what this product is capable of, or you're a hobbyist and you just want to try it out, uh, you can use a free tier and basically um, get experience uh, from using the product and then decide whether you want to move on with further implementations. So the free tier is 5,000 internal steps per month or 2,000 external steps per month. With this, I wanted to very warmly invite you all to our beta that is available right now to our product to start using it. Let us know your feedback. Let us know what features you like about this product, what features you don't like, or what features you feel like are missing or are preventing you from using this product to a bigger extent. We're very keen to listen and hear your feedback, and I'm looking forward to more interactions. We are also very committed to this product. We are going to launch it to general availability by the end of 2020. With this, I wanted to thank you very much for attention and wish you happy development of Google Cloud Workflows. Thank you very much.